by the end, you will be able to have users sign in using Google in your Next.js application. Let's get started. In an empty Next project, you first install the Next auth package by running npm install next-auth in the terminal. Once that is done, then we create the following route in our app forward slash API slash auth slash catch all syntax for next auth and a route.ts file inside that folder. Inside this file is where we can use the package and handle our authentication logic. Firstly, start by importing next auth from the package, then define a handler variable that is going to be next auth with auth options being passed in as a parameter. We will create this auth options object shortly. Export the handler we created as a get request and a post request because we will be making both types of requests for authentication. Now we are ready to create the auth options. Firstly, import the Google provider from the package because we are going to be implementing a sign-in with Google. After, define the auth options object. This will have a key named providers that is going to be an array. Inside this, we will add the Google provider. We will pass client ID and client secret to this provider. We'll get these later, so don't worry about it for now. Both of these are going to be environment variables. We are almost there, but there is one more environment variable left to add, and that is a secret for the package. Be very careful with the naming of this variable and only call it next auth underscore secret. We need to generate this secret by going in the terminal and typing the following command. Open SSL rand dash base 64 32. Hit enter and copy the generated string. Go to the environment variables file and add this as next auth underscore secret value. We are now done with the code setup and the next step is configuring Google Developer Console which people usually are uncomfortable with because Google's UI is a bit overwhelming, but it's very simple. In the browser, search for Google Developer Console and click on the first link. Then click Create New Project and give a name for your project. Once done, press Create. Wait for your project to be created and once it's complete, select your project through the notifications. Now in the left hand side, click on APIs and services for your project. This is where we are going to enable a service to handle authentication. Click on OAuth consent screen option, then select the external user type option and press create. On this new screen, fill in your application name, add a support email address and scroll down. Ignore the app logo and app domains sections, they are not essential. Inside the developer contact information, add an email you would like to be contacted by. Then you can press save and continue. Now it's time to add the services. Click on add or remove scopes. On this screen, select the first three services, userinfo.email, userinfo.profile and open ID. Then you can scroll down and click update. We are almost there, just one more step left. Double check to see that your selected scopes are present now and you can scroll down and click save and continue. The next step is about adding test users. We can safely ignore this and press save and continue without doing anything. Lastly, you are taken on the summary screen. Once again, just scroll down and click back to dashboard. Nice work so far, we're pretty much done now. Only thing left is to generate our environment variables. So click on credentials on the left hand side. Then at the top, click on the create credentials button. From the options, select OAuth client ID. In the options, select web application because this is for a website we are building. Again, write a name for your website. Now comes the really important bit. Scroll down and add authorized redirect URIs. Add HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 3000 forward slash API forward slash auth forward slash callback forward slash Google. Once your application is deployed, do the same for your deployed domain as well. After you are done, press create and boom, we have the environment variables we need for our application. Firstly, copy the client ID and add it as Google underscore ID in your .env.local file inside your project. Then do the same with your client secret. Copy it and add it as Google underscore secret in your env file. Nice, you're done. Let's test it. We are going to create login and logout buttons in our front end now to see if everything works. First, let's define a login button component. We will create it in a separate file because it's going to be a client component. We will only display this button if we are not logged in. For that, we use get server session from the next auth package. If there is no session user, then we will display the button component. Let's create the button component. Inside the app directory, create a components folder and inside that, create a file called buttons.tsx. Start this file with the use client because we need interactivity and then define a login button component. This button will have an onclick 
that is going to invoke a sign in function. Import this sign in function from the next auth package. Pass in a Google string inside the sign in function because we are using Google sign in. While we're in this file, let's also define the logout button. This button will have a sign out function invoked on click. This is also imported from the next auth package that we have installed. Now we can go back to the page.tsx file and import these two buttons. Show the logout button if there is a session user present. All that is left to do now is going to the browser and testing this out. Press the login button present and it should open a Google sign in page. You can add your Google account information and you will be able to log in. This means this was successful. This was just the basic setup. Congrats, now you have auth in your application. You're able to achieve plenty of stuff with the next auth package. For example, access to the user's email, name and profile picture. If you would like more information regarding auth, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.